And so they were like, yeah, you should join the band. So we all learned a bunch of Muse songs. And then that really kickstarted it. And it was one of these battle of the bands that they used to have in Columbus. Oh my God, we bombed so hard. And yes, I was nervous as hell. I wonder if that's actually what I was thinking of when I wrote this song. It's kind of a blur, that whole process of starting that song and finishing it. Yeah. The writing process was very much like writing little blurbs of lyrics and like seeing what worked. I've talked about that song in different interviews before and given the meaning of it. I wonder if maybe it has changed and I just think that that's what I wrote it about, but maybe when I was writing it, it was about something completely different. He mixes alt pop, rock, and electronic music with fantastical visuals, and you may know him from his song "Without You." Please welcome Summon Luke to the podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. I'm I'm happy I I ha could have summoned you to my podcast. <laughs> um, yeah. So just to get right into it, like that that name off the back, Summon Luke off the bat. Sorry. Summon Luke, where does that come from or how did you come up with it? Um, well, I knew I wanted some kind of a moniker for the solo stuff I've been doing. And I was jotting down things that I enjoyed, things that made me happy, things that were sort of positive in my life. And it, I, I kept coming back to more fantasy, sci-fi related lore based stuff. And one of the things that came up was like a, a summoner or like sort of like a, a mage class or a wizard class in the not I, I never played D&D, &D, but RPG kind of board games and video games. And so I put the my name and the summoner class together and that was sort of where it came from. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And and so uh you you mentioned like this is the name for your solo stuff what kind of other musical projects or uh music uh bands so other solo projects like what other things have you worked on i've been in a few different groups the primary one is called playing to vapors i'm the the lead singer for that band and we've been together for oh man uh like 15 years now and um mm -hmm. That's been the primary focus, I would say, for the majority of my music career. And then I've gotten on as like a keyboard player or um, I've guest sung on, on on songs with other people, other projects. Um, but yeah, the primary ones are Playing the Vapors and now Summon Luke. Awesome. Awesome. And where like wh where did this desire come from to try like a solo project or i guess which came first between playing to vapors and this so playing to vapors is very much a democratic band everybody has their say it's it's you know there's four of us so you get like 25 yes. percent say and what happens and pretty much everybody has to be on board with moves that we make and that can i mean it's really great everyone has an amazing point of view and i i love all the guys in that band i mean we're best friends we've been best friends for you know over a decade now but it can slow the process down to almost a halt sometimes. And I sort of built up a back catalog of songs that I wanted to get out there and that weren't getting done and playing to vapors. And then COVID happened and that really slowed us down. Like if we were operating slow before, it was like non-existent. And that's when I started to say, okay, I should have some kind of an outlet for all this stuff I've been writing. Yeah. And yeah, the idea is that you know summon luke is much more a dictatorship where i like if i want to do something i just do it to ask yeah. permission it's just go for it and um i it, like it, it gives you that creative freedom yeah. to like not have to worry about if it fits a certain vibe of the band or anything like that like it's just do i like this yes or no and then put it out from there exactly yeah yeah <laughs> awesome and and Going all the way back to like childhood and things like that, what was your first experience with music like or what made you want to get into music? Well, the, I mean, playing the Vapors was a huge impact in my life. We met in high school and those guys heard that I could sing based on a karaoke performance that I had at some graduation party. <laughs> Somebody gave them like, oh, yeah, he can sing. And then we all learned that we enjoyed, we liked the band Muse, was the band that we all connected on. 
And so they were like, yeah, you should join the band. So we all learned a bunch of Muse songs. And then that really kickstarted it. Um, e even before then, though, like I did, I did, I took piano lessons when I was in elementary school. And um, I was always very musical. I was always listening to music. All my brothers listened to music. They would show me bands that they listened to, my sister too. Um, so it came from my my family. They were the ones who kind of exposed me to all this music. And then in high school, the those guys who roped me into being in a band with them because of our love for Muse, that was what sort of got me into music and into yeah. the Columbus awesome. scene. Yeah. Awesome. I'm from Columbus, and Ohio, by the way. I don't think I ever said that. I never like introed myself as a, a musician from Columbus, Ohio. Is this podcast, is it based in columbus ohio or where are you and it's it's out? not i'm i'm based out of well for now los angeles but also new york i bounce back and forth i'm out at a college in los angeles but live in new york okay awesome yeah but My I, I mean, in burbank yeah it's like I, I don't know what it was but like i i feel like columbus just like by coincidence i have a lot of like artists and bands from there on i feel i, I mean like i, I don't know how it's been historically but i definitely feel like recently in the past couple of years like columbus has taken off as like a huge music scene like there are so many bands so many artists that i'm like starting to hear about and like their music and i look them up and they're from columbus ohio that's great i i feel like we have a pretty good music scene i i think that we we struggle a little bit to get the bands that we have out there into the world and like really push them but like from what i can tell like i've been to cities in, around the Midwest. And I like, I don't know that in the Midwest, there's a music scene that I enjoy more. Like even Cleveland, I've, I've seen a lot of bands in Cleveland and played a lot of the bars in Cleveland. And I would say that Columbus, I mean, maybe I'm biased, but I would say that we have a little bit of a leg up on like the, the venues and the bands that are playing in Columbus. Um, definitely Cincinnati. Cincinnati, I feel like only has like two or three venues that I've played at that I, I enjoyed playing at, but. Uh, in, like in Ohio and then like Indiana, like I don't know that there's much going on in Indianapolis or Pittsburgh yeah. also was like very lackluster for me. Like I didn't see a lot of local venues in Pittsburgh, yeah. but Columbus. Yeah, don't sleep on us. I feel like we have some stuff going. I mean, we're not quite no, to definitely. like. Yeah, like I, so I'll awesome. list off some names. I don't know if you know them or not, but like JD, J. Joseph, the, the big one, obviously, 21 Pilots that you guys have. Like you guys have so, like so many quality, quality talents. And I also just had um, it was Adam Paddock from Columbus on the podcast. I think he's from Columbus. That's interesting. I mean, I just played with JD and Adam at uh, the Newport for the Columbus Against the World was the yeah, show. Yeah. Is that like, is that how you heard about me or? Uh, for you? Yeah. JD. So JD, I had been a fan of because like i i followed jay joseph and like he just works with uh jared from that a lot and like learned about them that way and then uh adam paddock and you i heard from columbus against the world because nice. I, I really like these like wh wherever wherever it is columbus or anywhere else like local things that are celebrating like bands or artists from that area from that place because mm -hmm. i i think it's a great way to like help get N not unknown but new or like fresh uh bands and artists out there that's awesome and what i mean what kind of music are you generally into or is it all different types for this it's podcast? all different types um but like towards the top i would say probably like the sort of like alt rock uh slash pop sort of vibe of like jd and 21 pilots like that sort of stuff well i don't do any of like the rapping stuff that 21 pilot does yeah that's, <laughs> that's fine <laughs> i didn't know i, I, listen, I listen to some of it and i'm just like i i can't keep up i'm just like that's so talented and so skillful mm -hmm. um but i guess like you you have plenty of experience like you said over a decade in bands solo projects whatever it is and so if there's someone in columbus or otherwise who's like trying to get their name out there or is making music and just can't find a way to like find an audience what tips or advice would you give to them oh gosh i am the wrong person to ask for this one <laughs> i i mean i think this day in this day and age you pretty much have to be on social media in some capacity yeah you have to be pushing yourself in some media other than the music itself which is kind of unfortunate because i feel like us musicians 
we really just want to write and record and play live. That's all we really want to do. And we don't want to do all this other nonsense of like, you know, album, like artwork and video and uh, pushing your like, like posting stuff on Instagram yeah. and live streams of you, like talking about the recording process. Like some of that can be cool and inspiring and I like some of it, but it just like this day and age is it's so much that you have to be doing on those platforms. And I mean, I really think that's probably what you should be doing. If you truly want to make it as a musician, you should probably be garnering some kind of an audience on Instagram or TikTok or YouTube or whichever platform you choose. I don't know that it necessarily matters too much which platform just so long as you don't pick a dying one. Um, yeah. I think those three are pretty good. I think they're pretty stable right now, at least. Yeah. And and <laughs> it seems like you have a bunch of live experience. I mean, you were just going through like all these different cities nearby that you've performed at. Going back to your first live performance, what was that like? And were there like nerves at all were you confident like what was just take us to that moment or that night like first ever live performance or yeah first or, or or first one that you would qualify as like trying to do music like playing to vapors summon luke one of those yeah i mean it was before we were called playing to vapors and it was one of these battle of the bands that they used to have in columbus where it was kind of like a pay-to-play situation where they'd give you a bunch of tickets and you'd sell all the tickets to your friends and then they come out to see you play. And then you'd get like a terrible slot during the like the early in the day. Yeah. And you play for like 20 minutes. And oh my God, we bombed so hard. And yes, I was nervous as hell. And uh it was a you know, we it was kind of interesting because we would we would get to play these really cool venues. Like it was, it was a venue in Columbus called the Alarosa Villa, which is like a famous metal venue in Columbus, Ohio. It's no longer there, but it was cool to get to play it. But um, yeah, like my my early experiences of shows were a lot of that. And there's a whole like, I don't know what you'd call it, like a like a pyramid scheme that existed. I don't I don't think it was just in Columbus, but it was <laughs> this company called Guerrilla Music Productions. And um, they would put on these shows like it would be a battle of the bands that have like 10 bands. Everybody would have to sell tickets. And then based on how many tickets you sold, that was where you got to play in the 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 evening in the show. Yeah, yeah. And in, in, in that's why like people would call set. it pay to play. Yeah, they call it pay to play because people would end up just like buying the tickets and then they'd pay to get the good slot. And then yeah. if you sold the most tickets generally and like you the way that they would like score the battle of the bands too was really stupid. It was like they would at the end of the night, they would do like an audience cheer meter. So like if you played early in the show, like all of your friends, they left by the time that they're doing the cheer meter scoring yeah. battle of the band. So you had no shot whatsoever. So those were my yeah, at, at that point. It's more just for like experience and getting to play a show than like trying to win it. Exactly. Yeah. Which we got a lot of experience. We played a lot of shows when we were young and it was really fun. Um, yeah. But yeah, that awesome. was our early shows. And... <laughs> hey, it's Heroic. And this episode is sponsored by me. Well, kind of. If you don't know, I recently started a clothing line called Quest Clothing, which you can shop right now. I'll leave some pictures here on the screen, but we got the Cord Collection, which is just this sleek black and white design on a bunch of products. And then we also have some more like merch style stuff with cover arts for my songs and things like that. I've been wanting to do this for a long time and I'm really excited that I now have it. And so expect a lot more collections, a lot more designs, coming out soon. I'll leave a link to it down below. And if you want to stay up to date with any new releases or anything like that, follow at shopquestclothing on Instagram. So go get cool designs like this or this or even this, and you'll be helping me support all of this, the podcast, the music, everything. Plus it just looks cool. We even got this nice big letter design on the back. Look at that. Look how cool that looks. So head to the link in the description to get yourself some Quest clothing and make sure to follow at shop Quest clothing on Instagram for updates with new collections and stuff like that. And now back to the episode. With playing to vapors, like you, you described a very like collaborative setting for uh, creating songs. Some Sometimes it slows down or stops, but whether it's in a band setting or like for you personally, how do you like to 
come up with songs or like start the creative process? Um, it's, it varies from song to song. Um, but my favorite way to write, if I can do it, is to have some kind of an idea, like a phrase or a subject matter before the songwriting process really begins. Like that's the first thing that you start with is some kind of like a phrase or a subject matter. Some, hopefully it's like a lyric because off, more often than not, that's the hardest part for me is writing the lyrics after the fact. And if you have that and then you go in, like it's it, everything else kind of forms around that. And often that becomes the chorus, which is also like one of the most terrifying things that can happen. And this happens a lot in Plank to Vapors actually, because one of the ways that we'll write is we'll start with like a, a riff or a verse idea or like an intro and like it's going great and it feels really good. And then it gets to a point where it's like, okay, there should probably be a chorus here. And it's like, now you have this amazing intro or verse part and now you have to write a chorus to that which the chorus should probably be better it should like s yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's climax. like the, the <laughs> meant to be like the catchy moment of the song that everybody knows yeah. and sings along to so now there's all this pressure on you guys as a band you have to write a chorus for a verse that you really like and it's i don't know it, it lends itself to a situation where you're going to be disappointed in the chorus and you're like oh man i really like the verse and then we got to the chorus and it's just kind of a bummer. It's way better, I think, if you start with like the core idea and then work around that somehow. Mm -hmm. um, and I find that most people who write, they write, they usually write by like riffing first. Like they'll just kind of noodle around on guitar almost aimlessly. And then they'll find a riff or a chord progression that they like. And they'll kind of hear a melody in their head and then they'll build off of that, which I've done my fair share of that. Like, I think that's a great way to write. But I think my preferred way is to kind of have the idea already in my head. And then it's almost like when you go to write, you're sort of like learning how to play the song almost in a way, as yeah. opposed to just like riffing and improvising your way into a song. Yeah. Awesome. That was a long winded answer. And, no, no, I, I love it. And And like, do you take inspiration from other bands or artists or are you trying to keep it more of a like original sort of thing obviously i'm sure there's some like subconscious level but just like do you do you are you trying to achieve an inspired sound or just like making what you want want to make absolutely taking from others i mean i feel like you know especially in the studio that's the best way to, to describe to like an engineer or to the rest of the band what you're going for like an example, like I just released a song called um, Leviathan. Yeah. And a huge inspiration for me on that song was Pink Floyd's Run Like Hell. So I was telling everybody like, yeah, that's the inspiration. That's what we should be going for. That's what it should, should, should kind of sound like. I mean, there's a lot of things in that song that I feel like are almost direct ripoffs of, of Run Like Hell by Pink Floyd. I mean, I feel like it's a very, I don't, I don't think that it's the same melody or the same progression or any of that stuff. Obviously different lyrics. But there's a lot of the vibe is coming from stuff that I remember from that song and trying to um, not like recreate that, but just kind of get at that feel of that song. And I'll do that with a lot of different songs. I mean, occasionally, I, I yeah, again, I, I think it's it's more of like in the studio and when you're describing the song to other people, trying to get them into the mood or the feel of the song it's like you'll use other songs as references for what you're going yeah. for yeah definitely I, I mean like i i'm uh also produce some music and i just literally had that yesterday where i was like working with someone on a song and yeah i was like i wanted to or i was inspired by this or i wanted to sound like this and was literally just like playing other artists and other bands songs to like give a like sonic idea of how I want it to sound. Yeah, it's the it's the best way to do it. And you can even do an A-B sort of thing where you play the song that you're working on and you play the other song and maybe the kick drum sounds super amazing on the recorded song that you're referencing. And then you go back to yours and you're like, oh man, we got a lot of work to do on the kick now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and what I guess, well, at first I want to just hop right into what you mentioned Le leviathan like it's a good it's a like a collection of 
songs right it's like three songs um yeah and just like jump into that what was the story behind it how long did each of those songs take things like that well the two of them took forever and there are old playing to vapors songs that i have always wanted to do at some point in time and i actually asked the folks from playing the vapors like is it okay if i just do these are we ever going to do them and they were like no go for it yeah it's it's what we were talking about earlier where it's like they they just sort of got lost in the shuffle and stopped making progress exactly and yeah we're we're on to new things with playing the vapors so we don't want to go back and do those songs but i didn't want those to get lost especially like the the opening track on that blatant immorality was one that i i had a demo from playing the vapors forever and I had always loved that song and wanted to do it and get it like fully realize it. Um, so like the the earliest demo I think I have of that song is like 2014 or something, like 10 years ago. Yes. And um, then before that, like the the last song on that EP, the Roll Down the Hill, is pretty close to the earliest demo of that song which was actually by our bassist at the time, Zach Cramp. Um, he like made like a little electronic beat thing that was, that had that sort of massive attack feel that that song has. Massive attack, another band that I referenced in making that song. I was like, it should sound like massive attack. It should have the same feel as like teardrop massive. I don't know if you know that song. Yeah. It's the intro of the house. And <laughs> I, I don't know, but it, 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 it like, I, I I'm I'm just in love that you're like got so excited that that's what you reference and because because it like I'm sure I'll probably hear it when I check in with it after this but I'm I'm sure it sounds similar not not in like a copy and paste way but in the like seeing where the inspiration came from kind of way yeah definitely check out the song Teardrop by Massive Attack if you have not heard that song it's one of the great songs it's again it's the intro to the show House that like show about the doctor who always solves medical problems yeah. as with Sherlock Holmes. But anyway, I digress. So those two songs, super old, and then just finally realized them. Leviathan, I wanted to build that EP as sort of like a, almost like a concept EP, because all three of them stem from the same chord progression, from the same like key, same ideas. Mm-hmm. And, uh, that is the newest piece and i i finished writing that i think that one wasn't i i I finished writing that not long before i released the whole thing so yeah they they varied greatly like the the roll down the hill one that's probably the oldest i i don't know the exact timestamp of that demo the earliest one but before 2014 and then yeah Yeah, definitely definitely took took a while to get to where it is today are you a music artist trying to find a way to get your music on as many streaming platforms as possible then check out distrokid distrokid is a super user-friendly and super easy to use service that will make your music available in stores like spotify apple music itunes amazon music youtube snapchat everything everything you could imagine it's available. People will even be able to add your songs into their Instagram stories. DistroKid helps you with the distribution, monetization, and promotion of all of your music. Use the link in the description of this video for 7% off any DistroKid package you want. Pick from musician packages designed to help artists get their own music out there, or even get a label package where you can manage up to 100 artists from one profile. So that's more for like managers, labels, and you can also get the musician package that I mentioned earlier, which is more for artists, producers, things like that. It's super easy and you can get 7% off any package right now with the link in the description of this video. So once again, if you're looking for a way to get your music on as many streaming platforms as possible i'm talking any platform you can think of get distro kit and get seven percent off right now with the link in the description back to the program if there is someone listening who hasn't heard your music wants to get into it would it be one of those songs that you recommend as like a first listen for someone luke or would you pick another song of yours absolutely i think yeah go listen to the leviathan ep that's a good indicate i think that's a good 
um, indication of what Summon Luke is all about. The one that you mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, Without You, is actually kind of a bad representation, I feel like, of Summon Luke. Because it's it's featuring a... I mean, it's not like... I, I really love the song. I love how it turned out. Yeah. Um, it was done... Um, so my brother is in film, and he directed a movie called Moon Garden. And if you watch the movie, which is on Shudder, it's a the streaming service Shudder. If you watch that movie, the song Without You, which is a song by the band Badfinger, and it was made famous, I think, by Harry Nilsson's version. Um, but uh, that movie has that song kind of strung throughout it. It's like a main theme. The mother is singing the song Without You to her to her daughter. And it's like it's sort of like a lullaby to her daughter throughout the movie. And he wanted me to do a cover of that song for the end credits. And I had the idea of having a female vocalist featured on it. And so that's that's why I say it's not the best representation, because first yeah. of all, it's a cover and it's a female vocalist. And it was done for a film. It was very much like my brother had a pretty clear vision of what he wanted everything to be like. So I think it yeah. turned out great and, and I'm super proud of it but it's not exactly where I feel like summon Luke, what it, what summon Luke is all about. So. Yeah, definitely. And, and you, you mentioned like going back to, it, it sounds worse than this, but going back to summon Luke being a dictatorship, um, <laughs> like, like doing whatever you want, having all this creative freedom and then going to making music for a movie, which is like very much working around uh, your brother's version or like whoever's like running the film, their vision how was that like process for you that's a good point yeah when i was i did a couple of the scenes from that movie as well and it was the opposite of a dictatorship he was very much coaching me on exactly what he wanted where things would go even some notes on melody and and harmony he would be giving just kind of singing parts that he felt like should sound a certain way and then i mm -hmm. would make it happen so it was definitely not a dictatorship when I was doing the, the, the music for that movie, for sure. So that's a yeah. good point. Yeah, I'm sure. And and um, with with Summon Luke in general, like, is there any sort of cohesive message you're trying to send? Or is it just a place to, like, create what you want to create and, I mean, and maybe bring to life some of these scrapped uh, uh band songs uh, yeah it's more so the latter it's more so just kind of a, a place where i can an outlet for material that i'm not able to do in playing to vapors and maybe other music projects but i do think there is some cohesion in some of i think that there's something with the fantasy sci-fi kind of nerdy kind of video gamey vibe that is is strung throughout all the songs with yeah. summon Luke. yeah awesome and and like i feel like i'm at least from a listener's standpoint like i i really really love when artists or bands do this and i feel like it's gotten more popular now where they like use their music to create like a fictional world or a fictional storyline is that something you want to do with summon luke either now or in the future or is it just like coincidence that these pieces are coming together i think it's more coincidence i, I don't have any long-term plans for a story strung throughout all the songs yeah. all the music i do like so the one of the artists for the album artwork i have um his name is alfonso flores he did the artwork for a hopeless rebel of light running mad and um conjure and they all kind of feature the same character in all of the album artwork. And I like that a lot. So hopefully if I, if, if he'll have, if he'll have, he'll, if he'll do more album artwork for me, he'll continue to keep that character involved and maybe yeah, yeah. there'll be something there. Awesome. It's, it's almost like a little Easter egg of like people who know who the artist is, like when they see that character, like know that he worked on it or he made the art for it. Yeah, absolutely. And so if whether with playing to vapors or uh you as summon luke like got this chance to collaborate with any artist or band in the world who would you want to work with my gosh in the world and it's any artist i want and any artist Very the, the, like some some magical genie comes to you and is like tell me an artist or band and you get to collaborate with them i mean my first instinct was tom york but 
um i kind of like if i think twice about it i might have to go with jim james from my morning jacket just because i feel like he would be a lot more chill and open to my ideas than tom york i think i I don't know for sure like tom york i'm sure he's a he would be fine and it would be great and radiohead is definitely if you if you put a gun to my head they're probably they're my favorite band so probably Mm -hmm. tom york but honorable mention jim james because i feel like he might be more chill and and fun to collaborate with in general yeah awesome and and, and (laughs) in in a very similar vein or similar style of question are, are there any like dream venues or bucket list venues that you want to play your music at one day i mean i'll go with the cliche i mean red rocks seems like it's just amazing to play like it feels like it's got that natural upslope and you got all the rocks around you i'm sure the acoustics are insane i would love to play that i've I've never played like the, one of the big venues here in columbus is kemba live and that would be a bucket list for me if i could play that at some point uh, just because I've seen so many shows there, and that would mean a lot to me. Awesome. And and w- with like going back to venues you have played or shows you have played, is there one that really sticks in your mind or like seems to be a favorite of yours? Well, I just got to play the Newport with JD yeah, and yeah, <laughs> and Lisa I, I, I was gonna bring that one up because that's such a like historic venue or like yeah. iconic venue. Similar to Kemba Live, I've seen so many of my favorite bands playing at the Newport. Yeah, it's been around forever. It's definitely the oldest venue in Columbus. It it might be the oldest venue. It's I mean, it's got to be in the top 10 oldest venues in the US. It's it's been there forever. And um, yeah, that was a huge highlight for me. Also, with playing to Vapors, uh, we got to play a festival called Bunbury Music Festival in Cincinnati once. And that was a huge highlight for me. Just because like the Black Keys were on that bill, the Decemberists were on that bill, awesome. and a, a bunch of other like we, oh man, who's that violinist that? Um, sorry, I'm blanking on her name, but like we we did like the at the time there was an app that was really popular called Face Swap, where you would take yeah. a picture with somebody and it would swap your faces, and our drummer and guitarist did a face swap with this famous violin player. I'm blanking on her name, but. I think you would know her if I if I said her name. But um yeah, that was a huge awesome. time. Just seems well, like a good time all around. <laughs> yeah. And it, with uh again, Sum and Luke are playing to vapors. Is there like a song you've worked on that's uh just like really your favorite, I guess, or that for some reason like the process behind it, the story really uh is meaningful to you? Yes. I mean all all the songs are very meaningful to me in Sam and Luke and yeah, Blaine to Vapors too. I mean, I, I, I feel like each, every song has a special place. Um, I will say, yeah, there are some songs that maybe didn't quite reach the capability that I thought they could, but like in, in playing to Vapors. So like the song shred the master design off of the album shred the master design. That's one that I'm really proud of. That's one I think that we really, performed well in the studio it came out even better than i thought it was going to when we wrote it and um i think the producer did a great job of getting the performance out of us and we did some tweaking of the song in the studio which made it really exciting everybody was into it at the time and i think it really shows when you listen to it so that song definitely for playing to vapors um for some and luke i feel like the song uh, milky way I'm really pleased with how that one turned out. And um, that one also is a lot of people don't know, but it, that one's also a cover, but it's an int- It's like, it's written by another artist in Columbus that I used to be in a band with. And her version is completely different. And it's one of those things where I, I had a sort of interesting vision for what the song sh- could be, what I yeah. thought, like I had an idea for it and just like kind of took it and ran with it. And I just feel like it worked really well somehow in the studio. I felt like everyone who recorded to that song brought something different to the table. And I'm really happy with how that turned out. Yeah. I I haven't listened to the original, the one that, uh, who you used to work with, but I'm, I'm from what you're saying, it sounds like one of those covers because there are a few that I've heard where it's a 
cover song but so different and so unique that it like you almost can't tell that it's uh based off of another song or a cover of another song yeah i mean if you're interested it's on um the only place where she released it was on Bandcamp, and uh, she goes by the moniker friend and i think it's friendmusic.bandcamp.com is where you can find it um but yeah it's a little difficult to find her version of it it's not on spotify yeah. or youtube or anything so yeah yeah but i'll definitely uh check it out hey if you're like me and you're interested in the youtube or creator space you should check out the published press the published press is a completely free newsletter founded by youtubers colin and samir they host their own podcast talking to some of youtube's largest creators They've edited some of the best content I've seen on YouTube, and now they're sharing their knowledge about the YouTube space with you for free. The published press comes out three times a week, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, with everything going on with your favorite creators and platforms. And like I said, it's completely free. Just enter your email address to receive the published press whenever it comes out, and that's it. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below, sign up to the Publish Press, and get all the info you need on the industry. Back to the Leviathan EP with like some songs being years and years, even like a decade uh, old, or like you wrote them long ago. Uh, what is, or is there a song you have that you had an idea for, you wrote it out, and like by the time you released it, or just now in general it, there's like a whole new meaning to it yeah definitely um i feel that way about um the song caroline a lot of times like i wonder if what it means to me now is actually what it meant to me when i wrote the song like i always tell people that the song is is sort of about how like you can feel like the star of a movie, like how your life can kind of start to feel like you're in the center of a, of a film or something like that. Yeah. And, sort of, uh, and I wonder if that's actually what I was thinking of when I wrote the song, like it's, it's kind of a blur, like that whole process of me starting that song and finishing it. Yeah. It was like very calculated, everything that I did with it. Like, like the writing process was very much like, plugging in and taking out parts and then like writing little blurbs of lyrics and like seeing what worked and i wonder something like i like i've talked about that song in different interviews before and given the meaning of it and i wonder if maybe it has changed and i just think that that's what i wrote it about but maybe when i was writing it it was about something completely different yeah and I, sometimes that happens to me and i don't know i don't know how to feel about that but uh, no yeah it's it's like this weird <laughs> phenomenon and i know um in a bunch of interviews uh billy eilish has been talking about that with like the song she made for the barbie movie she was like v very much trying to think in like a movie score or soundtrack role of being like this song is about barbie from barbie's perspective and like wrote it and made it and then like as they were like you know making the finishing touches she was like driving around in her car listening to it and was like hold on, I think these are my feelings. Like, I think this is how I feel and, yeah. like, the things like that. And it's, like, weird how even if you don't realize it, there can be, like, sentimental value or, like, your your thoughts and feelings in a song. There, yeah, there's a John Lennon interview about that, too, where he wrote a song, and when you listen to the song, it definitely sounds like it's about Paul. Uh, <laughs> and it's, like, a really angry song at Paul. It was, like, when they were kind of at each other's throats. Mm -hmm. And he's in an interview talking about how like he listens to that song and he thinks that it's about him and that he can't mm -hmm. help it. But, like when he writes songs about other people, it just ends up being about himself. And yeah. I think that there's a lot of truth to that. Yeah. Like you're. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, and do, do you know what song that was? Cause like, I, I grew up in a huge like Beatles family. It's I called, love Beatles. And how, do you, and... how do you sleep at night? I think. Okay. Okay. I'm yeah, pretty sure. I haven't heard that one. <laughs> But I, I will definitely uh, check it out because, yeah, I'm a big, big Beatles fan. Um, I think they're just awesome. And, oh, like, looking down the road for you, now that you've done Columbus Against the World, Leviathan, what's sort of next for you? Maybe it's focusing on playing the Vapors or something like that. But what's, what's like, your plans for the next couple of months? I mean, definitely playing the Vapors is, is still going slowly but surely i mean we're supposed to get together tonight actually and do some recording so awesome. we'll see if that goes 
Um, and then, yeah, Summon Luke, I, I've been recording at uh, Moonlight Studios and Relay Recording here in Columbus, Ohio with uh, Joe Amadio and John Finnell. And I've got about seven songs that are in the works in some state of either really close to being done or not so close to being done. And I, I think I'm just going to keep rolling out singles at this point. I'm not crazy about that idea, but I've kind of been back and forth as to whether or not I want to do a more full length album thing or keep yeah. pushing out small releases, singles and such. Um, I, I, I feel like it's hard to do an album because I feel like inevitably you have like at any given moment a couple songs like maybe one or two that are like fully finished and ready to go but you're like still working on the rest of the album and you it, it feels like you're like holding on to them for too long or something like that when you just want to like get them out there yeah and in this day and age it's another one of those things where it's different these days you have to constantly be pushing new stuff otherwise you kind of get lost in the noise yeah. so I do want to keep trying to push stuff out on a regular basis. And I'm thinking I should be able to do another single release either in June or in July. I think that's going to be the next one. And um, we're, uh, we've applied to a number of festivals here in the summer. So hopefully we get on a few of those. Um, we're planning a show here in Columbus at Rumba Cafe in September. And then I sort of have a an idea looming in my head for like a a more recorded live performance yeah. and try to do something where sort of like a, a live from the basement recording where we do like three, four, five songs, record them, put them on YouTube and push them as yeah, either be awesome. full YouTube video or maybe like Instagram reels, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, just to start like i i i love those acu acoustic live like and anything like that that takes a song and puts it in a new setting is awesome to me um and and now just to like start wrapping things up i have a little segment that i like to do called know your stuff where i just play quick short snippets of uh, a couple of your songs and it's one just like can you can you name the song do you recognize them and then if you want to just like get into the story behind it, anything like that. These are going to be my songs. Yes, your 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 songs <laughs> from Summon <Okay>. Luke. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that was love was just an answer. Yeah, yeah. That was the B side from Hopeless Rebel of Light, and um, yeah, that one is definitely a song that I don't think would have flown in playing the vapors. You know, doing the same five chord progression for eight minutes was definitely something where you have to be a dictator in order to be able to pull that one off. And I'm really happy with how that song turned out. I feel like it's super mm -hmm. moody. And actually, um, one of my favorite things that we've done as a live band was um, when we played at the Newport, we played that song um, and it just sounded super big and it took its time and I felt like everybody was getting into it and uh, yeah awesome. really... and, and and was that like something you know going in that you wanted to be seven eight minutes long and have all these chords back to back or did it just sort of like end up happening okay. yeah it was a very conscious decision that I wanted that to be a song that you know gave space kind of made you feel like you were in a trance a little bit and um was it was very much like improvisational too. Like a lot of the lyrics and the melody I kind of came up with on the spot. And the recording of the vocals was done just sort of like as I was listening to the song. And I really love the vocal take on there because of that, because it's very raw and um yeah. It's yeah, a, yeah. My favorite. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, here's the next one I have for you. Jellyfish Girl, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. That song is almost verbatim a quest from the video game Elden Ring. So if, if <laughs> okay. Elden Ring, I, 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 I know Elden Ring. I haven't played it for myself, but I know of it. <laughs> yeah, so like one of the things that you do is you, you come across this like shack as you're going up to the, um oh man, what's the castle where you fight? Uh, 
you fight um not Goderick, uh what's his name? Uh Mar Margit. You fight Margit for the first time, which he's the boss that's sort of like the gatekeeper in the game. Like everybody gets to Margit and then they get owned for like three hours and then finally they got but anyway, so you're going up to that castle, you come across this sh shack. And there's this girl who's like telling you that in that castle up there, there's this crazy spider that's been that's grafted all the people from my village onto itself. Mm -hmm. And and um, you go up there and you see that the spider has like all these like human bodies and limbs attached to it and you kill it. And then you find this like brooch in like a pile of dead bodies. <laughs> you bring it back to her and then she gives you a jellyfish summon awesome yeah and it's, like... it's, it's, it's very much so getting into that like sci-fi like gaming uh f fandom that you talked about earlier um yeah and just the last one uh before we start wrapping up here you just and that's running mad yeah which uh, that one's kind of an old song you know is a sort of a breakup song from an old relationship and uh yeah, I mean, it's almost like a when we play it live, it almost comes off as like a country song. So it's very different from all the other stuff that we play. Like you mentioned, like having a, a theme throughout the band. That's why I say yeah. Summon Luke is kind of more just a collection of songs rather than like a yeah, then, then, yeah, then a album. sound. But that's again, it's like comes goes back to it being a dictatorship and I can just kind of do whatever I want. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to do something like that in playing the vapors or in some of the other projects I was in because people would be saying like, no, it's not really on brand for this. We should stick to what we do. And with someone yeah. and have sort of a country pop song right next to love was just an answer right next to Caroline. And, and it's yeah. still it's okay. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, those are all the questions I had for you today. Thank you so much for coming on. We, you, you definitely know your stuff. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, if there's anything else you want to shout out or promote to the people listening before we head out, feel free to do that now. I mean, I think we pretty much said it all. I'm on Spotify, Instagram, YouTube. I've got, I'm going to be pushing out some more video content here soon, hopefully some more singles on all the streaming platforms. So check out Summon Luke and yeah, Definitely look into playing the vapors. Keep tabs on us. We we probably won't be releasing anything for for a while, but you know, don't but give it's up. It's a good thing to have in the back pocket. And in the meantime, listen listen to what playing to vapors has released and what they what they have in their catalog. Exactly. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for coming on. It was a great time. I'll leave a link to all of that down below and anything else you want. And so uh, yeah, can't wait to hear these, you know, couple of singles that you have coming up soon or the new video content live uh, setting sound songs that you're putting out. Sounds good. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.